Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, other academics and also about set theory and just the common misconceptions about what is mathematics. And so it's not unusual for me to get a comment like this saying recommended for you or it's really just a notification. So for example, this one here says, what is modern in modern mathematics and how should modern teaching reflect this? And this here is by some lady called Imre Bokor. I don't even know how that's pronounced, but that doesn't matter. I did read the paper. It's an utter load of, ru utter load of rubbish, which illustrates more the stupidity of the author rather than her understanding of the fundamental theorem of calculus or what is modern in modern mathematics, and if even there is such a thing as modern mathematics. So um, so let's just look at the author here. The author is uh, born in Budapest, Hungary. She's uh, raised like a cattle. She's reared in Sydney, not raised, reared. She has a doctorate in Zurich, and her supervisors were these morons, Don Barnes, George Molnar, Macmullen, whatever, and Peter Hilton, who has a doctor, doctorate. So anyway, um, this poor lady <laughs> has three articles here. She's got 24 followers. Now, she says in her article, what is modern in modern mathematics? How should modern teaching reflect this? She says it is commonly held that what distinguishes modern mathematics is the availability of high-speed electronic computers and pocket calculators. What? With graphical? That, that's absolute rubbish. I mean, modern mathematics is not distinguished from ancient mathematics by tools, okay? It's still the same mathematics, if it's sound mathematics, that is, okay? If it's uh, garbage like set theory, which is not mathematics, and I'll come to that in a little bit. Uh, then, of course, uh, all bets are off, okay? Now, she says, Con consequently, mathematics is usually taught in schools and undergraduate courses, as if Euler and Gauss were our contemporaries. <laughs> actually, uh, Gauss would laugh at a lot of the things. He did actually laugh at a lot of the things that uh, people say today. They just don't know it. And we discuss cultural changes, blah, blah, blah. And of course, you can read that. You can stop the video and read her abstract. And she says, finally, in this last paragraph, we use in particular to illustrate, you know, modern mathematics. Oh, and by the way, there's something terribly wrong here. She says, at the same time, these developments have increased the power and scope of mathematics by enabling it to deal with non-quantitative problems. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, anything that has to do with non-quantitative problems, problems is not mathematics. Because why? Because mathematics is the abstract science of measure and number. Nothing else, by the way. It's, it's got nothing to do with set theory, topology, scatology, any of that other shit that you hear and in, in mainstream mathematics. Uh, you know, which really, it's not even ma mathematics, it's garbage. So it, this is completely wrong. Mathematics deals only with quantitative problems, okay? Nothing else. Now, um, and of course, I'm not saying you can't have set theory. Fine, you can have it, but it's not mathematics, okay? And you can have topology, that's fine too, but it's not mathematics, okay? It's got nothing to do with mathematics. And you don't get to call yourself a mathematician if you have a PhD in set theory or topology, okay? No, I'm sorry. You don't get to call yourself a mathematician at all unless you have produced great works. Uh, writing a dissertation, I'm afraid, won't even serve good as a colon cleansing document, okay? So please, don't call yourself a mathematician, right? So... Even if you have a PhD, it doesn't mean anything. Now, uh, 
And she says the purpose of this paper is to provide a sketch of cultural changes. And again, she says brevity dictates the, that details be missing. <laughs> ah. Okay. So we know she's going to toss out things there, which assume that you've already learned a lot of mainstream mathematics. And she says that, so she starts talking about the theory of fiber bundles to arbitrage of cohomology to number theory and blah, blah, blah crap, which has a lot to do with set theory and group theory, all anti-mathematical garbage. Okay. Group theory has nothing to do with mathematics. And then she continues to talk about uh, a lot of stuff, actually, which really has nothing to do with the fundamental theorem. And finally, after, a, I think, a few pages, she gets to the fundamental theorem of calculus revisited. And look how it's stated. It says the fundamental theorem of calculus serves well to illustrate Dirac's point. Now, if f is a function which takes uh, a and b to r, then the function f, which takes a and b to r, takes f t takes x to uh, this integral. I don't even know if I read it correctly, and I don't give a crap because most of this shit, by the way, is just symbols, and it supposedly is meant to intimidate somebody who doesn't really care about set theory or doesn't know set theory. Um, so, and then of course, this is quite laughable because they say it's continuous on AB and differentiable on AB. What that really means is that it's differentiable on AB open interval and that it's defined at A and B. That's all it means because differentiable implies continuity. So, uh, for a, for X is between A and B. Okay. So, uh, this, this is the statement that proves mainstream mathematicians, um, so-called in quotes, have never understood calculus. Think about that for a bit. <laughs> okay. This doesn't tell you anything about calculus. Okay. It actually strips away all the, and I'm not, not talking about her brevity details or whatever. It strips away all understanding. She doesn't have any understanding. She says this was originally an astounding theorem for it demonstrated uh, that two apparently unrelated problems, finding a function whose derivative is a given function, finding the average value of a given function have a common solution. <laughs> it's actually not the average value. It's the arithmetic mean of the derivative, and they are linked, as I've explained in my holy grail of calculus, world-class article, by the way, and you should download it. I'll place a, a link to it in the details section. So you'll see a lot of these things, and she'll, you know, wax eloquent here and state very obvious facts about uh, uh, line integrals and area integrals and volume integrals. And, of course, all this stuff looks impressive, but it's actually very basic this is part of advanced calculus and and then she says oh yeah that uh, nothing here actually says nothing makes a connection of the fundamental theorem but in fact the fundamental theorem permeates all of these formulas okay you can't use these formulas unless the fundamental theorem is true like i've explained in past videos you cannot say anything about the relationship between not capital F, but F and F prime F of X. In other words, the correct way to write this is not the way they write it because they've never understood calculus. Okay. The way you write that is you write it like this. You say F of X like that. Okay. And uh, F of X is equal to the integral of f prime of x. Okay, so you don't write f and then f like that. It's not just a case of symbology, by the way. It's a case of a, a great misunderstanding of the fundamental theorem of calculus in mainstream. Otherwise, it would have been written in this form. Okay, as I explained in the Holy Grail, you don't even need integrals, by the way. You don't need the integral sign. It's actually totally useless. 
Um, and of course, it deals with topics that have nothing to do with calculus, like infinitesimals, infinity, and all that shit, which uh, Leibniz came up with. So um, then, of course, set theory from set theory and Laws' theorem was developed the ultra bullshit known as non-standard analysis. And that's based on something called the transfer principle, which is what Laws' theorem is about. And of course, this assumes many, many things, many beliefs, in other words. And of course, it's utter garbage because it's uh, contradictory and has uh, problems right from the very first definition. So in, the, in an article I wrote recently on academia, I talked about, let's see how I talked about the, uh, <clears throat> the ultra filters in this article and non-standard analysis. You can read that. It's a very interesting article. How, and I, I've said that as chatbots improve, they will respond more in line with my views. In other words, they will become, they will agree more with me than they do with the people who create them because the people who create them are a bunch of morons. Okay. So, well, not really a bunch of morons, but I think, you know what I mean? They're not as smart as they think they are. And they have this problem by which they magnify their abilities way, way beyond, you know, what's realistically true. <laughs> so, in any case, um, so what this woman carries on driveling about in this, I don't know how many pages, not that many pages, is just utter, utter garbage, you know what I mean? And says, what more can we wish for teachers of mathematics? <laughs> so she tries to end off here on a nice uh, narrative, provides a natural example of a problem which cannot be solved algorithm algorithmically. <laughs> Well, if a problem cannot be solved algorithmically, it has no part in mathematics, okay? Mathematics is about algorithms, nothing else. And by the way, I have nothing against this poor sod. I don't know her. I've never communicated with her. You know, she might be a nice person over a cup of coffee or something, but she's a moron where mathematics is concerned. And again, no personal offense meant. So, um, I was going to talk about set theory, but I think I'm a little out of breath. I'll leave that for another time. If you're not already a subscriber, become one and become a follower on academia over here. Okay. So yeah, I have many articles, by the way, uh, 215 papers. Actually, I have three books, but two of them are listed as articles and they're all free. You can download them and copy them and do whatever you want, okay? And, uh, yeah, if you're feeling generous, buy me a cup of coffee or a meal. Write comments in the comment section. If you have anything worthwhile to say, please do not bore me with drivel. Uh, I have no time for fools, okay? And I, I don't, it doesn't make me happy when I read stupid comments. So please, unless you have a question, and also think carefully about your question, because if it's a dumb question, I, I really don't want to answer and I don't want to get involved. And of course, I'll delete the comment or hide it from my channel. That doesn't mean I'm, uh, ask, I'm telling you to go away. It just means I'm not interested. Okay. So my name is John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.